Snowke HQ. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to use the Bubble Data API to create new things via an API call within your Bubble database and also to retrieve things using this data API. So why is this useful? This can be very useful because it allows you basically to connect your Bubble application to any other, um, let's say, application or any other thing in the internet. Um, to make it or keep it as simple as possible. But let's assume you have um, a landing page where um, users can uh, submit their email or they can enter some lead information because you want to have a nice and quick and look good looking landing page, maybe built in Webflow or whatever it is or any other no code tool. You can send over data that you get via the data API, send it over to Bubble so it's automatically in your Bubble database. The same way you can also get data from your Bubble database. So what we do a lot, we use Bubble as our backend for um, building actual native apps. So what we sometimes do is when we build native apps, uh, we build the front end, we code ourselves in, um, in Swift for iOS, for example. And then we use Bubble for the actual user authentication and also for the database itself because uh, Bubble works quite well as a backend as well and it's uh, up and running really, really fast. So a lot of different use cases, again, just allowing you to get data from your Bubble app and also create data from your, for your Bubble app from other sources, uh, whatever these may be, other apps, um, other websites, other places you want to um, interact with your Bubble application. So what will you need? Um, quite simple, you will need obviously a Bubble application. Um, and in this bubble application, you will need some data types um, or one data type we're going to work with. We're going to create a new one in a second. Uh, you'll want to head over to settings and you want to head over to API and you want to enable the data API. Just click got it. And um, we have another tutorial also for workflow APIs and background workflows. And for this tutorial, we're going to just focus on data API. So what you will also need is Postman. Um, and there's probably other tools you can use as well. A Postman is quite nice. It's a, basically an API testing tool. So what we want to do, we want to test out that everything works out and see and basically simulate a third application or an external application and to see if the connection is working with the data API. So just download Postman, you can uh, download it for free. And in general, if you develop applications or just to develop software, I'll highly recommend using Postman or any other similar tool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head over to data and let's just keep it really simple. Let's say we have a new type called product. Okay. And this type called product will have a few fields. Let's say it has a name of type text, um, a price of type um, number. All right. And should we add another third field? Maybe let's use um, a Boolean um, in stock question mark or just in stock. Okay. So quite simple, we have here in stock, name and price. And right now, um, our let's check, our database is completely empty under all products. Keep in mind, I'm in my test application right now. So not the live database, this is the test database or the version test database. Um, but yeah, our application is um, or has no products in the database, obviously, because we should create the data type. So let's change this by creating a new um, product, but not in bubble, not here and not via the bubble application, but by triggering it via an API call. So we're going to head back over to settings to API. And what you want to check here is you want to check which uh, data type you want to expose for this API and only uh, just check the ones you really want to use in the API. So don't just check any uh, all of them. Just use the ones you really want to um, make a call to. So we're going to use product. OK. Um, I recommend using this or checking this box here, use field display instead of ID for key names. This will make API calls simpler. I'm going to show you in a second what that means. And we want to generate a new API token. This will be important. Um, you can call whatever you want. The token label basically has no, um, makes no difference. It's just for internal use. So let's just call that standard key. Okay. All right. And um, that's already it regarding bubble, to be honest. Um, the good thing is Bubble now shows us the data API root URL. Okay, so it shows us basically, okay, this is the endpoint we have to call. And what is really important here to keep in mind, there's two, um, basically two types of endpoints. One with this version test included, and this will make changes to and interact with the version test database. If you remove this, everything will stay the same, except you will interact with your live database. Very important to note that. And you will probably want to test with this endpoint. And then once you're ready to go to your live application, you want to remove just this part here, version test and one slash 
um, and, and, and you should be good to go. But we're going to just copy that, all right? And we're going to go over to Postman and we're going to simulate creating a new, basically a new um, thing, a new product. So I'm just going to paste the request URL here, okay? We're going to say, all right, I want to post, okay? So post, create a new thing. And what you want, want to do, you want to add another slash and add the object name. In our case, the object name is product, okay? Let's go back to Postman and we're going to want to add a product. Let's just, just click send and see what happens, okay? Okay, so the first uh, uh, error message we're getting is we're unauthorized, okay? Um, that is correct because we didn't add on any authorization. So let's solve this problem first. Quite simple. Again, you want to just go here, get your private key, just click that and you will uh, copy that to your um, clipboard. Get back here and under authorization or under header, sorry, you want to add as a key bearer and as a value basic and then your API key, okay? Or actually, sorry, that was my mistake. You want to have authorization as a key, yeah authorization as a key and as a value bearer. I just mixed that up with another um, software. And let's click send and see what happens now. Okay, so we're already getting the message success. It seems as if our endpoint is working and our authentication is working. If I just remove maybe one, two here, okay, and let's click send, we're again unauthorized because the API key has to be exactly the same. Why do we were we able to create a product? Well, we didn't provide any data field so we didn't provide the um the name in stock and price but that doesn't matter we can still create a product which has no field so let's take a look if that if that, that works so under app data let's go to all products you can see we have our first product here created date december 5th which is just now by app admin it has no field set nothing is set but we created it the data uh, entry is there okay so let's just delete that again right so let's go back to postman and now what we want to do we want to actually send over some data as well so you want to send over let's say you're sending this from your admin application um, and uh, you're one of your employees is creating a new product that should be displayed in your shop build on bubble something like this okay so i'm going to go over to uh, to body all right and um we're going to create um or we can use form data for that okay so for the form data, we're going to always provide a key and a value pair, okay? And the key in this case will be the name of the data, uh, basically of the data here uh, type, the field, data field. So in stock, name and price. So let's add that first. We want to add in stock, we want to add name and price. And here in the postman, you can define, all right, what type is that? So this is... Um, text or file. No, they're all text here. And now we can just go ahead and enter a value for in stock. Remember, we yet used yes or no, which means we have to add a Boolean, which is just true or false. Okay, so let's say this is in stock true. The name of the product, I don't know, let's call that blue t shirt. And for the price, we have to add a number, which let's say is, it costs $40. Okay, so now let's try that click send. And it says status success and it also gives you the ID, uh, the unique ID of this newly created thing. Let's check that. Let's go here to all products. All right, this is what I just created before. Let's delete that. But above that, we have our first real product in stock. Yes, blue t-shirt, price 40. Just to show you that it really worked, let's create a red t-shirt as well, which is not in stock. And it also costs 40. Let's send, check again, refresh that. And we have our red t-shirt, not in stock, also cost 40. Okay, so it works perfectly fine. And obviously you wouldn't use Postman to kind of send or create entries, but Postman is used to test this. Okay, so to test the connection. And then what you can always do, you can export the actual um, API call you made here in different programming languages and then um, use that in your external application to then trigger a new data entry in Bubble. Okay, so again, quite simple. Um, and this is the basic way to create new data entries using an API call. What we want to do now is we want to uh, basically retrieve a thing, okay, by its ID, okay. So we want to get um, get data by an API call, okay. So let's try that. So again, endpoint stays the same, okay, um, except we want to supply the unique ID, okay. So we want to add a slash here. 
And let's actually copy this unique ID here. So this one, for example, we want to get data for the red t-shirt from an external source. We don't need any data here, any body. So let's click none. Authorization will stay the same. And we're just going to add the unique ID here. And we're going to change post to get because we're getting data. Let's try that. Awesome. So we're getting a response and it gives us all the information. The ID created by, created date, modified, in stock, false, name, uh, red t-shirt, price, 40. If we use the other um, product here, our blue t-shirt, copy the unique ID, we can get the product for the, let's try that. And now we have the blue t-shirt. So it works perfectly fine. Let's see what happens if we remove the unique ID and just get the product information. So now we get all our products, okay? So we get a response with two results in an array. First of all, our blue t-shirt and our red t-shirt. So in total, it shows us, okay, the count was two. We're getting two pieces of data. This is really important again, because I, as I mentioned before, this kind of allows you uh, using Bubble as a backend. So let's say you have an app a native app uh, which you build using another software not a no code tool or by coding uh, you can use bubble and then always call this endpoint and use the bubble database to then get data and display it within your bubble uh, within your native application but getting the data from bubble via an api call so yeah um that's basically it regarding a simple application into creating data and getting data from your bubble application using api calls might be very helpful for you um, there's a few more things you can do. For example, if you want to retrieve data, you can apply filters. I would recommend looking at the bubble documentation, but I think this tutorial acts as a good starting point. And from there on, um, it's quite simple to add some filters and go a bit more into depth into the depth of um, the bubble data API. So thank you for watching and see you guys for next tutorial with NoCoHQ. Bye.